इन्वायरमेंटल साइंस सब्जेक्ट को ट्रिपल थ्री मॉड्यूल फाइव लेसन एटीन वाटर एंड एनर्जी कंजर्वेशन हेलो लर्नर्स वेलकम इट टू आवर सीनियर सेकेंडरी इन्वायरमेंटल साइंस कोर्स ऑफ एन आई एस आई एम नीलम गुप्ता कोर्स कोऑर्डिनेटर ऑफ इन्वायरमेंटल साइंस वेलकम यू इन दिस प्रोग्राम ऑफ एन आई एस इन आवर प्रीवियस प्रोग्राम वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस डेट वाटर एंड एनर्जी आर रिक्वायर्ड फॉर सर्वाइवल ऑफ ऑल ऑर्गेनिजम्स एंड देर इज ग्रोइंग शॉर्टेज ऑफ वाटर एंड एनर्जी विच लिमिट्स ग्रोथ एंड ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट ह्यूमन बींग्स थ्रू ओवर एक्सप्लाइटेशन ऑफ दीज रिसोर्स हैव मेक दीज स्पेस पॉल्यूशन ऑफ नेचुरल वाटर बॉडीज सच एज सी रिवर लेक एसेट्रा हैव मेड देयर वाटर अनयूजेबल द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ ग्रोइंग शॉर्टेज ऑफ टू इसेंशियल रिसोर्स नेमली वाटर एनर्जी कैन बी सॉल्व ओनली थ्रू देयर वाइज यूज एंड इफेक्टिव कंजर्वेशन एनर्जी कंजर्वेशन रेफर्स टू रिड्यूसिंग एनर्जी कंजम्पन थ्रू यूजिंग लेस ऑफ एनर्जी सर्विसेज फॉर डिटेल डिस्कशन ऑफ वाटर एनर्जी कंजर्वेशन वी हैव विद मिसिज शिवानी गोस्वामी रिटायर्ड एचूटी फ्रॉम मदर्स इंटरनेशनल स्कूल न्यू डेली शी हैज लॉन्ग एसोसिएशन विद एन आई ओ एस शी विल डिस्कस दिस लेसन इन डिटेल फ्रेंड्स वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द लेसन दैट इज कंजर्वेशन ऑफ एनर्जी Today's lesson the objectives would be use of energy by society and various conventional and non-conventional sources of energy improving energy efficiency in home place of work transport industry etc and various energy conservation programs in the country energy may be defined as the capacity to do work energy can be transformed from one form to another however energy can neither be created nor destroyed and cannot be recycled the sources of energy may be renewable or non renewable use of energy by society human beings and all other living organisms require energy for their activities and physiological functions living organisms obtain the energy from food and is stored in the form of a compound called atp i am sure you have heard about this adenosine triphosphate molecule it's a high energy molecule in nature the ultimate source of energy is sun during transfer of energy through food chain some energy is always lost as heat apart from energy required for life processes humans need energy for carrying out various activities that make life comfortable these are heat or electrical energy is needed for cooking electricity is required for running various appliances like light fan coolers etc fuel such as petrol and diesel is required for our transport vehicles energy is required for pumping water up the multi storied buildings energy is also required for various industrial processes that ultimately result in manufacture of different kinds of goods energy is required in agriculture for irrigation tractors for farm machines spraying pesticides etc thus not only for our life survival we also use energy for various other aspects of our life that make our life comfortable this shows the split of the total world energy consumption this was taken in 2013 as the picture shows the majority part that is almost 80% is from non conventional that is non renewable resource we can take it from the fossil fuels the three forms of fossil fuels that are maximum in use are petroleum coal and the natural gases only about 18 or 19% of it is from the non conventional sources of energy the split of which is shown in the smaller diagram you can read the details one by one total fossil fuel is 80% whereas the renewable is about 11% biomass 0.17 solar energy and 0.12 is the geothermal heat hydropower is about 3.3 and biodiesel is about 0.17% and biomass electricity is only about 0.28% wind power is about 0.5 and geothermal electricity is about 0.07% solar photovoltaic power is about 0.06% and 
ocean power is about 0.001 percent. So, there is lot this aspect of renewable split sources of energy, how we conserve the non-renewable and renewable sources of energy. The conventional sources of energy are fossil fuels, they are limited and non-renewable. Fossils are remains of organisms that lived in the past and fossil fuels are plants that got buried under the earth that became rocks over the years. Fossil fuels have to be unearthed from mines. About 70 percent of India's energy generation capacity is from fossil fuels which like coal accounting for 40 percent followed by crude oil and natural gas as at 24 percent and 6 percent respectively. The type of fossil fuels are coal that is a solid form, it is mined and then transported through trucks and trains. In our country, coal mines are found in Raniganj, Jharia and Dhanbad in Bihar. Next is the oil. It is a liquid form which is pumped out from the ground after drilling a well. It is sent to far off places through tankers or pipes. Oil is used in automobiles and aeroplanes. In India, oil is found along the west coast and in Digboy in Assam. Third is the natural gas. It is a mixture of gases. Methane is the primary component of it. The gas we use for cooking which comes in cylinders as LPG that is liquid petroleum gas or as compressed natural gas we call it as CNG which is largely being used for public vehicles. Till about 5 decades ago there was no worry about exhaustion of fossil fuels which are non-renewable source. But with increased population and increased consumption of fossil fuel, it has become necessary to look for alternative non-conventional sources of energy. These are on your screen, solar energy, wind energy, hydro energy, tidal energy, geothermal power and energy from biomass. Comparison of when we carry out comparison of conventional and non-conventional sources, there are three points that come to our mind. Conventional sources are non-renewable, other than hydel power, all of them cause air pollution and cause environmental threats, they are expensive and they are non-renewable. So, there is no, there is a danger of getting, we running out of their reserves. Non-conventional energy is considered the energy of future. Considering the benefits of non-conventional energy, many countries have started producing this, this energy in large scale. Solar energy is the first one or the energy from sun is very important. It is widespread in nature, is non-polluting and available free of cost. Solar energy is now harnessed through solar panels directly which heat homes by solar radiation, solar photovoltaic cells used in solar TVs etc and is used to cook food in solar cookers. Solar, solar energy is also used in industries. Next is the wind energy. Wind has the power to propel the blades of wind turbines. These turbines cause the rotation of the magnets which are which create electricity. Global wind power capacity has expanded rapidly to 236 gigawatts in 2014 and wind energy production was around 4 percent of total world electricity usage. A windmill is a mill that covers, converts the energy of the wind into rotational energy by means of the vanes called the sails or the blades. Next is our hydropower or hydel power. Many dams have been built on rivers to store water at a height and then potential energy of the stored water is converted to kinetic energy by letting the mass of water flow over turbines. Thus, electrical energy is obtained converting the potential energy of the mass of water into electrical power. It is very widely used accounting for about 16 percent of global electricity generation. 
the cost of hydroelectricity is relatively low making it competitive source of renewable electricity. It produces no direct wastage of water and has lower output level of carbon dioxide. On the screen you can see the largest hydro uh, project in China on the Three Gorges River. Next is our tidal energy. Tidal oceanic energy is the energy of ocean or sea waves which drive energy from wind which in turn drives the from the solar energy. So, the en sun heats up the water and it in, uh, in the cyclic change gives rise to the waves. Tidal energy can be transformed into electrical energy. Tidal stream generators or TSGs make use of this kinetic energy of moving water to power turbines in a similar way to wind turbines. Our next one is the geothermal energy. Geothermal power is the heat energy or the thermal energy present in the earth's crust. The heat in the upper part of the earth is readily accessible and can be used to generate electricity. Geothermal power is cost effective, relative, uh, it is reliable and environment friendly. Geothermal wells release greenhouse gases tapped deep in the earth, but these emissions are much lower than those of the fossil fuels. Then comes the energy from biomass. Biomass is plant matter produced as a result of photosynthesis. Some of it can be burned to provide heat, for example, wood and agricultural waste. It can also be used for power generation or converted into alcohol that is liquid or methane gas to be used as fuel. Since these are obtained from plant material, they are called biofuels. Biomass is renewable energy and shall be available as long as plants grow on earth. Thus, for supplying fuel wood, fast growing trees like oil palms, then species such as euphorbia, jetropa, etc. are being planted. Another use of biomass as fuel is to collect agricultural waste, crop residues and animal manure and convert by bacteria into biofuels such as biogas. Biogas digesters are large vessels in which organic waste that is from plants and animals are made to undergo bacterial transformation and produce biogas which can then be used for heating, cooking, etc. Biogas is a mixture of methane and carbon dioxide. Methane can be obtained by anaerobic digestion of manure and sludge of sewage treatment units by means of anaerobic bacteria. This is one way of treating the sewage. This is a pictorial depiction of a biogas gas plant. On the left are the pipes through which the waste matter is pumped into the digester and after anaerobic digestion the gas accumulates on the top which can be then piped into the household uses. Bioethanol is it is an alcohol made by fermentation mostly of carbohydrates produced in sugar and starch crops such as corn and sugarcane. It also made from beetroot by fermentation and distillation. Ethanol can be used as a fuel for vehicles in its pure form. Pure ethanol may be used and there is no need to change the engine from ethanol in a place of petrol. It is made from vegetable oils and animal fats. Biodiesel can be used as a fuel for vehicles in its pure form, but it is usually used as a diesel additive to reduce levels of carbon monoxide from diesel powered vehicles. In India, some oil yielding trees that can give biodiesel are Ratanjot, then Nakchampa and rubber seeds. Biodiesel does not contain any petroleum, but it is it substitutes for the petroleum in the same uh, conventional engine. Last is the nuclear power. Nuclear power or the nuclear energy is the use of exothermic nuclear nuclear process to generate useful heat and electricity. This includes nuclear fission nuclear decay and nuclear fusion. There are about 437 nuclear power reactors spread over 31 countries. There is an ongoing debate about nuclear power. Environmentalists for nuclear energy contend that nuclear power is safe, sustainable energy source 
that reduces carbon emission, but opponents contend that nuclear power pose threats to people and environment. Improving energy efficiency. We have limited resources available on earth and our demands are continuously increasing day by day. Therefore, we have to conserve energy and improve energy efficiency which is discussed here. At home what can we do? We can definitely switch off our electricity, bulb, fan, etc. and all the instruments that we are using at home when not in use. Use fuel efficient hearths, cut only the dry branches for burning, use the gas at simmer level, it saves cooking gas and it also makes the cooking more healthier. Keep the materials ready before switching on the gas stove. Use solar cookers for heating and cooking. At workplace, use carpool or share transport vehicles. Switch off lights and fans when not in use. It does not matter if somebody else is paying the bills, it is not about saving money so much as it is about saving power. Computers to be switched off when not in use. All these help in saving the amount of electricity that we use. In transport, to use public transport system as much as possible instead of using your personal vehicles, car speed to be kept minimum between 50 to 60 kilometers per hour, moderate driving, driving at lower speed that is. Then take care to check and mend leak of fuel tanks and exhaust of vehicles and turn off the vehicular engine at stop rather than idling. Promotion of solar energy in India. India is both then densely populated and high in solar insulation, providing an ideal combination for using solar power in India. Government of India has started a large number of projects towards it. It also initiates schemes and incentives like subsidy, easy loan and concessional duty on raw material import excise duty exemption on certain devices and systems to encourage use of solar system. Indian Renewable Energy Department that is IREDA provides financial help for this purpose. Government is planning to set up 10 million square meters solar collection areas by 2022. This will conserve energy electricity equivalent to that generated from 500 megawatt power plant. The state of West Bengal has initiated to make the use of solar power mandatory in new multi-storied buildings. Rajasthan government has also set aside about 3500 kilometer square area of Thar Desert for this purpose. Rural electrification too can be done almost in 2,700 villages using the solar photovoltaic system. Even Australian government as part of Asia Pacific Partnership Program has come forward to train the solar engineers in India. In the agricultural sector, solar photovoltaic water pumping systems are used for irrigation and drinking water. Solar dryers are used for dry harvest to dry harvest before storage. Solar cookers, solar energy used for supply of hot water in hospitals, hotels and large kitchens have solved the problem of electricity to some extent and it needs to be extended. Promotion of CFLs and LED bulbs for lighting. CFL is the compact fluorescent light. This contains mercury that is the essential component of the bulb for the fluorescent lighting. It allows the bulb to be an efficient light source because one, it is using much lower amount of electricity and it has a long lifespan. LEDs on the other hand are safer in comparison to CFLs, there is no mercury in the bulbs and most of these LEDs have a longer lifetime in comparison but yes they are costlier but it is being compensated for its long life. Use of star rating of electrical equipments. 
This is a new attempt by the Government of India. Bureau of Energy Efficiency is an agency of Government of India created in 2002. The agency's function is to develop programs which will increase the conver conservation and efficiency of energy in India. The government has proposed to make it mandatory for appliances in India to have ratings by BEE starting in January 2010. BEE star energy efficiency labels have been created to standardize the energy efficiency rating of different electrical appliances and indicate energy consumption under standard test conditions. The picture on the right shows these stars and you have been seeing these on your refrigerators, on your AC and other electrical appliances. Labels indicate the energy efficiency level through the number of stars highlighted in the color on the label. Star rating system ranges from one star that is least energy efficient, thus least money saved to five stars most energy efficient, thus most energy saved. Refrigerators, air conditioners, washing machines, lighting systems, etc. will bear these star, star levels to indicate their energy efficiency. Transport and energy. Transport sector is the fastest growing source of greenhouse gases. Methane, nitrous oxide, etc. are released by the transport vehicles. Of the total greenhouse gas emission from transport, over 85% are due to CO2 emission from road transport vehicles. Reducing energy waste requires improving energy efficiency by using less energy to do more work. The best way to save energy in transport vehicles is to increase the fuel efficiency of motor vehicles. Fuel efficient pow uh, vehicles powered by hybrid gas electric engines and electric vehicles powered by fuel cells running on hydrogen are being developed. Fuel cells are about twice as efficient as internal combustion engines and have no moving part, require little maintenance and produce little or no pollution. Riva is a small electric car developed in our country. Use of small sized car initiated in, instead of big cars and using two wheelers can go a long way in saving energy. Large reduction in energy cost can be done by using vehicles with efficient engine that reduce consumption of petroleum or preferably that uses renewable energy source throughout its working life. Using biofuel instead of petroleum fuel is a new field. Thank you friends. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson and learned a few tips to conserve energy. Thank you Shivani ma'am for sharing information related to water and energy conservation. Before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points that is what you have learned. Energy is defined as the capacity to work. Energy is renewable and non-renewable. Conventional sources of energy are fossil fuels, whereas non-conventional sources of energy are solar, wind, hydel, power. Tidal, geothermal and biomass energy, biofuels are obtained from plants and plant products and may be in the form of liquid, bioethanol may be obtained by gases, carbon dioxide and methane that is biogas. Oil seeds of plants like jetropa, hevia and calophyllum yield biodiesel. Certain careful action of at home and place of work can save energy. India has a well chalked out electricity conservation program, promotion of solar energy power in India and promotion of CFL, star rating of electricity equipment by BE and Agency of Government of India under Energy Conservation Act, development of fuel efficient vehicles to reduce emission of greenhouse gases as well as to reduce energy waste. Dear learners, this is all about lesson 18, water and energy conservation. We will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. Thank you.